Welcome back, today we're going to be talking about snappers. Snappers allow an object to move back to a known location and parent to that location uh, in a really easy way. Uh, this is useful for things like hats, bracelets, keys in doors, um, jewels in temples, or, or whatever you want to do like that. You'll see them everywhere once you start seeing them. Fuses in a fuse box if you're making a puzzle map, all sorts of stuff like that. Perfect example of a snapper actually exists on my avatar. I can remove my face and I can put it back on again, and that's a snapping based operation. We're going to be doing a basic snapper setup, but uh, in a subsequent video I'll also do a hat for you. Let's go ahead and get started. You're going to need a couple of tools for that, so let me show you how you can get those tools. I've opened up my uh, private UI here so you can see my inventory. I'm inside Resonite Essentials and then Tools. You're going to be needing a dev tool tip. That's here. You won't need a Protoflux tool, but it is here if you want to play around with it. Basically all my videos we're going to be like, hey, you need this and this, and uh, you're also going to need the color tip today, which is over here, color tool. We turn off private UI again, and I've got all three of those here on my tool shelf, so I'm going to go ahead and get started. So we're going to be doing, like I said, just a basic snapper to start with. So with my um, dev tool tip equipped, I'm going to create new, and we're going to go to 3D model, box, and I'm going to shrink down the box to a more reasonable size. There we go. Now what I want to do is so that one box will snap on top of the other box. We think of this of like putting something on a pedestal in a weird, you know, temple or whatever you'd like, it works for anything. So I'm going to take this cube and I'm going to duplicate it. So now we have two cubes and I'm going to swap over to the color tool and I'm going to make the top cube blue and I'm going to go ahead and change color. Whoops, I swapped around to places I shouldn't be swapping around to. There we go. And now the bottom cube is red. So we've got two cubes, one red, one blue. Now we're going to open both in the inspector. To do that, I've got my dev tool tip, secondary, and then open inspector, put that that side, secondary, open inspector, put that that side. Now these are both currently named box, which is going to make it very confusing. So what we're going to do is name them uh, correctly. So this is the red box. So I checked that by just turning um, off for just a second. So I'm going to rename it to red. Leave that open, come over here, this is the blue cube, so I'm going to rename it to blue. Now I've got the red cube and the blue cube named correctly, it should be a lot easier to figure out. Now when it comes to snapping, there are two components that you need to learn how to use. They are called the snap per and the snap target component. Uh, it's easy to get the two confused, so I want to give you a rule of thumb to think about, which is that the snapper snaps into the snap target. If you think of the snapper like an arrow, the arrow meets its target. So the one that doesn't have target in the name is the object which is snapping, and the one that does have target in the name is the location of that snap. Now I've seen a lot of people do this in some strange ways, etc. This is the way that I set up snappers and I find it the most easy to do. Step one is to go ahead and position your snapper object, that's the object you want to snap, where you want it to snap to. So in this case you want it to be on top of the cube here. Now I could line that up perfectly using maths or uh, aligners, etc. That'll do for our purposes. So with that done, I'm going to go ahead and drag the blue box onto the red box here so they're now parented. What does that mean? Well, if I grab the red cube here, you'll see that the blue cube follows. So now we want to make it so that the blue cube just snaps on top there. To do that, if we go ahead and select the blue cube, and then we push this one here, this button right here, this will create a parent above the blue cube, which has the same transform rotation and scale as the blue cube currently does, and then parent the blue cube to that new uh, child. So hit the button. You'll see we've now got blue, which has zero on all of its um, position and rotation, and on the scale has one, 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 and the parent has that position, rotation, and scale set. We're now going to name this the snap target. and then go up one. So now we've got the red cube, the snap target, and the blue cube. On the snap target slot, we're going to be attaching the snap target component. You can find that in attach component, transform, interaction, snap target. And then on the blue cube, which I believe is over there, but whatever, I just spawned another inspector. Um, we're going to be adding the snapper component. Remember the snapper snaps into the snap target. So transform, interaction snapper. Now this won't work out of the box, there's still stuff to do, um, but before we do that I want to show you how similar these components are to each other. If 
we scroll down here to the, this is the blue cube here, you'll see it's got that snapper, and on the, the left here is the snap target. They both have these two things in them. They're named slightly differently, but they have these two lists in them. Snapper whitelist, snapper keyword whitelist, and on this side, snap target whitelist and keywords list. This allows you to set up a snapper in two different ways. The first way is to do a direct one-to-one -one relationship between the objects. And what that means is only this blue cube can snap into this red cube ever. Like no other blue cubes can snap there. It's good for if there's a system that needs any sort of security or uniqueness. So for example, my face is a uh, uses the snapper whitelist one-to-one -one system. Ooh, those are my tools. Um, but the snapper keyword on both sides here allows you to do sort of more than one object or uh, you know a non-known object. It's useful for hats or anything that will be spawning after the model um, or after the world. The reason why I'm able to use the one-to-one -one pairing on my avatar is that the face and the avatar spawn at the same time so they can refer to each other. But let's say you had a hat which you only put on sometimes you'd need to use the keyword whitelist there. I do see most people only use the keywords. I do want to encourage you to remember that the other option exists there and it's particularly useful for things like puzzles so people don't cheat. Um, so I'll show you the one-to-one -one pairing and then the keyword pairing. So for the one-to-one -one pairing hit add on snapper whitelist and hit add on snap target whitelist and then we just need to do this <laughs> and you'll see what I mean. We're going to grab the word snapper and we're going to drop it into the first item on the snapper whitelist, and you'll see it says snapper on blue. And we're going to grab the snap target and drop it into the snap target whitelist over here. There we go. Now they're set up and theoretically should snap, but there's usually another problem, and I'll show you what that is. If I move this out of the way, you'll see that we also, when we added the snap target, a sphere collider got created on our um, snap target slot. And we can actually visualize that by pushing visualize here, and you'll see it's quite small. And this makes it difficult for snaps to occur because snaps need a radius where the sphere collider can detect that the snapper has entered the snap target's range. This is controlled here by the maximum snap distance here. So if I were to set this to 0.5, you'll now see that we've got a bigger sphere here, and this means that we'll have a lot better um, luck when we're snapping it. So I'm going to go ahead and move this blue cube on. And there you go, it has snapped. Now when I drag this around, you'll see that the blue cube moves with the uh, red cube, but if I de-snap them or, or break them apart, you'll see that the red cube now moves and the blue cube moves in isolation. So let's snap that again, and there we go. So that is the one-to-one -one pairing. Let's now do the keyword pairing. So I'm gonna put them both away from each other again. We're gonna clear out the snap target whitelist and the snapper whitelist, where are we? Here it is. And in the snapper keyword uh, whitelist here, I'm going to type uh, box. And then over on the right here, I'm going to add to the keyword, and I'm going to drag across box and put it into the keywords of this snapper. And once again, it snaps. But because this isn't a one-to-one -one snapping, any blue cube that has those components set up will snap. And that's the, the benefit of the keywords over that one-to-one -one pairing. So there you go. There are other things that we can do as snappers. But the one thing I'm going to show you before we leave off is this animation time, because we had a, a question from someone in the Discord about this. You can increase this animation time here to make it so that there's more sort of effect as the object snaps in. Let me up this to 0.4, and I'm also going to up the maximum snap distance to 2. You'll see that's quite big now. I'm going to go ahead and close uh, out this um, out this inspector here to get rid of the, 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 uh, the ball. And now I'm going to put a cube nearby. And you'll see how it animates in. That's the animation time. Let me go ahead and select that again, and let's maybe slow it down. So we'll go to snap target, and we'll change this back down to 0 0.1. Now watch. Oh, that's actually faster. Yeah, we need to make this, this number needs to go bigger, I apologize. So let's make this number one now. So it should take one second to get in. There you go. And so it snaps into there. So there you go, that's snappers for you. I'll see you again next time. Let's do a hack next time. Bye-bye.